this is the table I think most of you might have seen it uh, which is done out of uh, a Swedish uh, scientific study uh, where we had problems uh, with um, they didn't dry off the high producing cows it was Martin Odensten who did this 2006 and, and he uh, checked out to make uh, 36 to 48 hours um, milking into wool when you dried off the cow and three different groups otherwise uh, one below 15 kilos per day one between 15 and 25 kilos a day and one above 25 kilos a day and you can see that all these three groups were during this study uh, dried off the same way uh, 36 hours the first time 30 uh, 48 hours the second time and 48 hours the third time if you had over 25 kilos and also some uh, recommendations uh, corresponding to this uh, table check other and he health teat dip day one to seven day eight teat dip day nine to fourteen check other and health and teat dip because this is a, a hazardous time when the other goes from lactating fully lactating to dried off and uh, you must pass that period quick enough uh, it was our uh, feeling and with this uh, scheme you can do it on a regular working week on every cow uh, sometimes one cow or another will have uh, one other uh, further 48 hours uh, relapse and milking once again we also try to use dry cow treatment on uh, hopeful cases i mean mild subclinical cases not chronic uh, um, not promising cases with staphorus they will not heal so we use other health class uh, uh, which is uh, really um, a geometric mean for the last three test days uh, that gives them uh, a classing so Um, here you see selective dry cow treatment is believed to be the best way and it's um, today it's all also agreed in the US which took some time which uh, they have used uh, blanket dry cow therapy in a five point program as you might well know and here you can see the other health class which is called JHKL uh, is from zero to nine and uh, you, it corresponds to a certain cell count the last three test milkings um, and you can see should you use antibiotics on these healthy cows no dry cow treatment on these cows from other health class uh, three to eight you could use it if you think it is worth it because of the cow's uh, history and on these worst cows who are above 600,000 you shouldn't use uh, dry cow treatment because they will not heal anyway you only create a certain risk of more resistant strains so this was the this is how we used it uh, for several years it also has a column for teeth sealants uh, which we are not so fond of um, if we not have very uh, environmentally loaded farms which have a lot of envi environmental mastitis and it is not so common in Sweden uh, yet we still have most most staphorus and uh, uh, contagious strepper strep uh, streptis galactia and strep hubris uh, of the is more abundant But of course, uh, you might not have a, a cell count test. So therefore, in our new guidelines, we also have a table for CMT tests. You don't know the cell count. You could do repeatedly 
two CMT tests, one two weeks before drying off and one at the last milking day before you dry off the cow. You can see it's the same principle. You get CMT one to five and you move to the columns for what you should do. And of course, check the cow and see if it's uh, worthwhile or if maybe you shouldn't uh, be too hard on the dry cow treatment. It's a bit tricky because CMT you have on one quarter and you might think uh, that it's cell, uh, rare that you have the same CMT on all four quarters, but you have to use this with some feeling, uh, some uh, documentation. Uh, it's easy if all are one uh, or all are five. Um, so that's how it looks uh, in these recommendations. And the um, dry cow treatment in the Nordic countries, uh, which, have, which uh, Sweden belongs to, they have a collaboration between this. And you can see that Sweden is here. It's 26.6% of the cows that get the dry cow treat treatment. And uh, Denmark is using it a lot. Uh, and Finland and Norway much less, especially in Norway, they don't like dry cow treatment. But in all multivariant regression analysis that, that are performed, the two risk factors, the, the two, uh, sorry, the two success factors that are most evident in most studies, in almost all studies, are dry cow treatment and teat dipping after milking. So uh, we try to use it. Uh, we are on the right angle, uh, right uh, level uh, corresponding to the population in Sweden. But it might be that it's not the right cow any, uh, all of the time. Some maybe use it on all and some on none. So the, me the median is OK, but it might be the wrong animal as well. So we try to do some communication about this to the farmers right now this year. and. Um, Uh, communicating these new guidelines m much more uh, clear. I also have something uh, that I can share with you. Uh, uh, this, uh, how to gi give a cow an intramammary antibiotic treatment. There is a good, um, uh, the link up on this slide, uh, it's open. It's a Canadian uh, link. They have done some uh, some leaflets you can uh, give to your farmers or use yourself. Uh, here it says how to admi administrate an intermammary treatment. Uh, it both uh, for mastitis and uh, for dry cow. Uh, there are some uh, details here uh, and pictures. It's free to load down from the internet. Quite nice uh, produced. The same uh, the same um, place in Canada uh, has also produced how to give a cow an antibiotic injection. This could also be good if you'd like to teach your farmers to treat animals with uh, searing um, also freely downloaded downloaded from the internet and uh, at the last one is how to give a cow an internal teat seal um, both for um, uh, intramammary treatment and teat sealant it's important you don't protrude uh, the tube too long into the T channel. So we'll get these links and you can use them if you like.